Welcome to all new Look Back in Amber. From exclusive interviews to interesting inside insights, since 2010 we've been the best place to be for all things audio for us Newport County fans. Coming up in the next 24 minutes, I'm Lamsey and with Stephen and Luke, we caught up with Newport's number three, Declan Drysdale. First of all, talk to me about uh, the first time you found out about football. Kind of where were you, what were you doing, how did you get into this crazy world? I think it's just more like when you're a kid, you're just playing on the street with my brother and his mates really and then I was just getting kicked about and stuff like that and I kind of loved it, just uh, playing in the mud, playing on the streets, getting all the cuts and bruises and things like that and I just grew from there really, all my family are big football fans and things like that so I think it kind of just generated down to me. So where were the streets to? Where were you playing? Uh, Birkenhead, in the heart of Birkenhead, not not too far from Tramier's ground, literally a two minute walk so... Um, yeah, and you just see the floodlights of a night and things like that. I used to go all the games when I was younger, and I just I just grew from there really. Growing up in that area, was there a natural football team for you? Because I think these two are hoping you're going to say Tranmere. I'm kind of hoping you say Everton, no, no. Liverpool. I'll be honest, <laughs> so, um, right in the middle. Yeah, right Liverpool. Middle. It was so. Yeah, but I used to I used to always go to the Tranmere games. It was probably a bit cheaper for me. So um, and obviously being two minutes away and things like that. So we used to always go on a Friday, Saturday, and just have a good a good time. To be honest, and then you should all have a kick about and say, uh, oh, I'm the, I want to be this player. I want to be that player. You know. So it just kind of goes from there, as every football fan does, really. Who, who was your kind of idol at that point? Any ideas? Steve even Gerard, I'd probably say that's yeah, the course. that's the one, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Going from that one through youth football, what happened next? Yeah, so um, I was at Tramia when I uh, about from about eleven to eighteen, seventeen, I think it was, and then a lot a lot of stuff happened. I got offered the pro contract, and for one reason or another, I didn't take it. And then I kind of uh, had to work my way back up the pyramid. Then I went to uh, Vauxhall Motors. Um, and played there for about six months and uh, then I ended up getting a trial through my agent sort of me a trial at Wofford. I ended up playing against Coventry in a uh, like a trial game kind of thing for me and I was just unbelievable that day and I think that was kind of the uh, making of me. Wofford offered me a contract and then Coventry offered me a contract at the time for Coventry's the probably the better one for me and it stemmed from there really. Obviously I'd done Coventry, I'd done a bit a few loans there and there, got promoted with Cambridge a few years ago and then I found my way to Newport County now which is which I'm loving at the moment It's that promotion with Cambridge talk me through that experience Oh it was great um, at the, uh, that season I went to Gillingham on loan it was my first kind of proper loan in the league and then I went to Cambridge in the second half of the season I had, I, I'll be honest I had a, a quite a tough six months at Gillingham um, just in and out the squad wasn't really playing in my position and I think as a young lad as well I was living so far away from home and I just think it all got a bit, not a bit much for me, but it was a great learning curve for me. I really grew from that. Um, and then I went to Cambridge and I found my feet. Again, it was it was a great team to go into. You know, they were flying at the time. Um, probably overachieving, if I'm being honest. But they had some great players, Paul Mullen, uh, Wes Houlihan, and we had a great second half of the season. And it was a great feeling to get a promotion. I think I actually scored against Newport, to you be did, honest. Yes, I was going to bring that up. It was my uh, first professional goal. So, mm. What was that like for you at Ronnie Parade? It was a bit different because there was no fans as, as such. It was mm. empty, but um, I wish I did experience it um, then because Rodney's always rocking, isn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? There's there's a section behind the dugout in their head all the time. So yeah, I would have uh, loved to experience that. It's but. lovely we get the edited commentary highlights mm-hmm. and you can just hear it. And just, I'm always weighed. When, whenever we get the commentary sent over, Chris sends it over to me the next day, all edited down to about seven or eight minutes. And the noise is just, it, it just makes me so proud. I, to I have hear got that. to say, it, it surprised me a lot because it's not, it's, although it's not the biggest of grounds, the, the atmosphere and the noise that they generate is, is fantastic. And even the away support, I think the away support goes a bit unnoticed at times. I think it's top notch. I think you can't, you can't fault that. I know Steve wants to talk to you a little bit more about coming to Newport County yeah yeah. you joined Newport County why did you join Newport County but also uh, Josh Pask was on loan did you have a conversation with him about Newport County um, before joining not really to be honest I um, I met the gaffer funny enough the Port Vale game last season I think it was yeah. um, and he he, he, he he just sold it really well to me um, I, d- I didn't need to tell him because I know Newport you know what a club they are in League 2 now they're always fighting for promotions and things like that and I got the taste when I played there, of course, at Rodney, and I just, I just knew, I just, it just, I had just a feeling that it felt right to come to Newport. Um, very Probably sat there thinking, I can score goals here. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just keeping them out at the minute. This seems yeah. to be the problem, but I think we, we will get there. But again, yeah, I just, I met the gaffer, and I liked, I liked the plan for me. I liked the plan for the club, and then I actually met the chairman that day as well. And to meet him and things like that on the first day, really. 
where he didn't have to, and I just I just got a very good, very good vibe about the club. So did James approach you with with a plan? Did he say, right, this is what I think? Is is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, not just a plan for 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 me, but a plan for the club as a whole and. You know the community as a whole. He's obviously a local, a local uh, lad is the gaffer, and he he told me all about the community and what a community it was, and uh, yeah, and it's not been far wrong. Yeah, it's a really special place. I think us Newportonians knock it down a lot, and I don't think we need to. No, I, which I, is what we're kind of this is what Newport City Radio is here to do. We we want to talk about the happy side, the positive side, mm-hmm. you know, because there there's loads, but it sometimes gets a bit lost there every now and again. I can relate to that because obviously where I'm from is it's probably similar to Newport. You know, it's got it's 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 got its beautiful places, it's got its rundown places, but people don't appreciate it as much as they should because it's a, it, you know what I mean. It's just things like that, I, and I think I can get it because of where I've come from and my background. So yeah, yeah. I don't know whether you found that I spent three years living down in Cornwall, uh, looking mm-hmm. to go to uni, and um, it makes you really, really appreciate the the good things about yeah. Newport rather than just negative. And if you stay here and you don't have that little break, is that the same with Birkenhead? A hundred percent, yeah. And like I, I probably appreciate home more now than I ever did. You know, I love going home to see my mum and. Me family and things like that and just doing the little things now so yeah but also I love coming back to Newport because it's such a it's such a great place and the people I've met just from football and things like that and now it's becoming a re- it, this is becoming much more of a home for me now Newport people have got a lot of tough questions so there's a lot of fun <laughs> ones but we're going to get the tough ones done yeah, really yeah. early on no so look what have you got for us yeah David Paul Green on Facebook said do you think the Newport County can turn around their current home form yeah, I do. I, I believe that. I'm not just saying that because I'm on here. Um, I know you guys go the games, and I feel like this season we have been unfortunate. Do you know, we've had. We don't get me wrong. We've had our games where we have we have been we haven't turned up and things like that. But I think you look at as a whole. There's been there has been positives. I think it's just kind of trying to get that switch. And I think when you chip, sometimes you know we talk about the fine margins. They just feel so great at the moment. Like. When we're not scoring, I think every little mistake we make just seems to be going in at the moment, and it's it's difficult. But I think we've we've got a kind of group that will stick together, and I think the fans just need to try. and I know it's frustrating; and they pay the money and things like that. But we're we're trusting the process. I think it's just hammering home that hopefully you guys are trusting us and seeing what we are bringing. I think there's no questions. We are playing for the share. We're playing for the manager and things like that. So it will turn around. Are you aware of some of the? Stuff that happens not only at Newport County, but some of the negativity that can can be out there on on social media. Of course, it's it, you know you're not oblivious to it in this day and age. Social media is such a big platform now. But I think as long as we know, that's all that matters. We we can't concern ourselves with outside noise. It's the same when you're on on top. Everyone's complimenting you things like that. You can't look at that too much because there'll always be one negative comment. And I think you know it's just trying to be level headed and not worrying too much about the outside noise. If we know what we're trying to do as a group on the inside, that's all that matters. We spoke to James um, at the end of last season and mm. again at the beginning of this one, and he was saying that um, he's learnt certainly in Newport County not to take the highs too high and the lows too low and try and get that middle ground a little bit so is that a message coming through to you guys as well? Of course it is yeah yeah. I think as professional footballers you know that anyway the minute you get too high is the minute you're probably getting a bit too comfortable and the moment you're getting a bit too low is I think you're struggling if you're getting too low because football the gaffers actually said this a few weeks ago the world is a different place a week later do you know, so I think you've just got to try and remain level-headed in football, and you've got to do that the best you can, so then you get you get the best out of yourself. We spoke about it, Lausanne, look back in Amber, and the the way that there is nothing like football, isn't there? If I, you know, if I do a a, a poor night DJing or a poor radio show, I'll know about it, and I'll be you know I'll, I'll be quite frustrated by it. But the listeners might not, and I've got. I've had to learn that there might be a bad show, but there's a good show straight after it. And I, you know, but no one's going to shout at me. No one's going to scream at me. The audience won't know. With fans, they know, don't they? And they, you know, that that's. I think that can be the problem sometimes. With obviously, I don't want to. I think football fans, you know, one result and one result this way, one good result goes the right way. I think it's just it's got to come from everyone, hasn't it? Stay, you know, keeping a level head. And I know sometimes we get carried away, or sometimes we get a bit too low. But yeah, I think it, the main theme is that is just trying to stay level-headed because, as you say, you might have a poor radio one week and then you be, you think go home another week and think, wow, I've just had a very good show there. Yeah, 
And it's almost like when you when you have a bad one, you've got it's a long time to get to the new to the good one, and then we have a good one, then you overhype it, yeah, and then the next yeah. one can never be that good. It's 100%. just really bizarre. Alison Davis, slightly naughty question. So we're going to give you Alison's question, then you can see whether you want to answer that yeah, one, yeah. or we can flip it a little bit. But Alison said, "How do you feel about your current position in the table, or if you want to flip it into kind of what do you think you can do to help the team get out of the situation that we might be in?" Of course, it's not where we want to be, but I think the amount of signings including myself that the gaff has brought in I think it was always going to be a ca- not a transition I think it was go- well it was going to be a transition period but I think once we do gel obviously we've had a few injuries and things like that mm. it's not it, we don't want to be in this position of course we don't but it, sometimes you find yourself in that position but again it's trying to remain positive and I think once it does click you know you've seen signs of it this season I, I hope anyway that you know there's, there's signs there certainly that we are going to be a top team but it's just about I think we just just lacking a bit of consistency at the moment and it's up to us to put that right great answer um, that's heavy let's get Stephen to lighten it up yeah <laughs> I like to bring the fun to these things yeah I've noticed that <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with his deadpan delivery <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah so I'm, I'm here for the fun yeah <laughs> we had Garvin and James on and they talked about lookalikes so I know uh, what you're going to say yeah I <laughs> know what's coming is there anybody in the current squad who looks like somebody famous or from a film or so you can get your dig in first I f- yeah I feel like this was a question aimed for me to be fair because I do get the Prince Charming no. a lot <laughs> oh, I do get the Prince Charming a lot yeah but then is there did anyone did you hear else? my suggestion what is it that if the club needs to make a bit of extra revenue around Christmas time off to Panto you go well the chairman did mention that when I first come <laughs> they do a Christmas yeah. party or something every year yeah. so he's, he yeah. wants me to go as Prince Charm but oh, I'll, I'll see what after talking to you for about 10-15 minutes we've got grander plans for you we're going to pop you at the Riverfront <laughs> I can't remember what it is I'm sure it's Robin Hood this year at the Riverfront um, it's been to have a Prince Charming every Panto's got a Prince Charming in his well name. you know where I am now don't but you so you, yeah. you know this, this wasn't intended to throw you under the bus so you get a chance now to pass the buck on to another player i'm trying to think i don't think there's anyone else is there is there any anyone you guys would say nathan mariah well she's oh speed. Like speed yeah yeah, 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 yeah. well yeah that's what he, that's what he gets called now speed yeah 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 i, I need because i'm old i need I to mean, go and google this yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 i'm sure it won't be hard to find hey, if you know how to use tiktok then <laughs> hey youtuber if you think you won let us yeah, know i think that one's probably the, the only one i can think of speed probably yeah played in three different countries in Wales from Newport County was up in Scotland last season Ross County and obviously you played in England what was that football education like being in those different countries I'd say last year was the biggest education I've I've probably ever had um, being that far away from home in, in the sticks in Inverness wow I know I didn't play as much as I wanted to but it was a real good time to reflect and so just focus on myself and what I, what I actually wanted and uh, it made me more hungry last year uh, I'd probably say not playing as much and being so far away but as you say yeah every every different move you get is a different is a different challenge and I'd, I'd say this one's been different for different reasons obviously being a Coventry and playing in England and things like that has been different so yeah I think every everyone every different move you get requires a different challenge you, diff- you meet different people so yeah is there a difference in football between the regions no, I wouldn't say so. No, and um, Scotland gets a lot of flack, and I, I had to go in there last year. I'm, I, I was probably the same. I thought, oh, Scotland did this, that, the other. But going there last year, there is some real good quality in there. And but then again, I think now the League Two is not as the League Two of old, is it? You know, you know, we we know ourselves. The quality in League Two now is is phenomenal. So I've seen one or two rumours on social media that you're potentially eligible for Wales. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Uh, believe it or not, my my nan was actually born in Wales in Wrexham. So yeah, it's it's something. Obviously, it, that if it comes about, then I would take the opportunity. But uh, again, it's it's just fully focused on. You know, I've got I've got a long way to get there yet. To ho- uh, but hopefully one day that would be nice. How does that whole process work? I don't I, I don't actually know. To be honest, I think it, it obviously goes on like birth certificates. Then you've got to look into my nans and think. There's loads of different uh, things with it. So. I couldn't tell you to be honest. Yeah, so it's not a case that you have to say right, okay, I'm eligible for this, this, and this. And yeah, this is what I and would then like obviously, well, I, pro- well, I would imagine whatever country I, I'm eligible to play for I would look into my background and things like that, and then come and watch me for a few games or whatever, and then make a decision yeah. if I'm good enough. Brilliant, learning stuff every day. Question from my listener, John Vaughan, um, really good mate. He said, "How do you feel about the use of VAR in the Premier League to start off with, and then after that, would you like to see it used in lower leagues?" 
it's a mad, it's it's a mad one VAR, isn't it? Because it does divide opinion. But I, I do think if it's used in the right way, it is it is um, it's 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 of course it's good. But I think there's so much controversy around it, um, especially you know it takes away sometimes the moment, doesn't it? You know you've seen a lot of goals where fans are going mad, players are going mad, and then VAR comes along and says it's disallowed. I just I think we've adapted to it. I, I, don't get me wrong, I do think it's better now it's than weird. what it was. But like, I, I couldn't imagine a game without it now. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think of it, but I think it's it's now it's here. I think I, I can't see it without. I don't know what if you'd like to see it in League One two. But I think that raw the, the raw emotion that you get now in League One and two and things like that is just it's unbelievable, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. and I think. Although you don't want to be on the end of a bad decision, I think sometimes it makes football. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I think so. I think it's one of the things I love about League Two football. It's kind of football in its purest sense. It's real, isn't that's, it? Yeah, that's, that's what, what I, I love mean, about yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, that's what kind of hooked me into it, really. Yeah, don't get uh, me wrong. Of course, you want every decision to be bang on, but it's not going to be like that, isn't it? And yeah. I think, we, to be fair, one of the things is in training. We, we when we do small sided games. We had some horrific decisions from the coaches and stuff like that, and the way out of it is just by saying, "Oh, you get a you get a horrific decision on a Saturday." So then it becomes like, "Oh yeah, we'll just get on with it." So I think, yep. yeah, yep. So this is another listener question from Legman on Twitter: Who do you think would survive the longest in a zombie apocalypse <laughs> out of the first team? I seen this one actually on when you tagged you me in the tweet. Your research I see, as well. That's yeah, interesting. I seen yeah. this one, and you know what? I'd done my thoughts about it, and. Um, I'd probably say Lewis Collins. Ooh. I don't know why. Okay. I just feel like he'd be. You can't throw a name out there and not say why. I just feel like he, he knows a lot about like he's into like dinosaurs and things like that. So I just feel like he'd be best adapted if a zombie apocalypse. I just mm. feel like he's watched a lot of films. <laughs> probably watched Shaun of the Dead. God knows how many times. <laughs> I just feel like he'd be the one that would just be weird enough and wacky enough just to know how to survive. Yeah, I keep changing my mind. I'm going to go for my ex brother in law Sean from Sunderland. Yeah. Because he's, it, like you just said, he's just watched so much telly. Yeah, if there was so a, he's been to know lots of escape techniques. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's probably watched all the Walking Dead and stuff like that. That's what I mean about Luke Collins. He's just, I know for a fact he loves his film, so I'll probably have to say him. Is there any Newport players you you guys would think? Nick Townsend. Oh, yeah, that is one just because he'd love to fight them, I reckon. <laughs> Not because he's, <laughs> he, he, yeah, he'd probably be up for the fight, yeah. Joe Day because of his size. Yeah, I'd say Lewis Collins and Nick Townsend just because he's he's an angry man, Nick, sometimes. Yeah, who would be the first person to uh, get killed in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> this was not Legman's question. Uh, this is my, this is my, I'm freestyling. Oh, I don't eat... <laughs> That's the worst question. Isn't me, it? you don't have to answer. Not me, actually, right. no. But I would be scared. Uh, I'm trying to think who who would crumble. I'm going to say Adam Lewis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Adam Lewis. Any just, reason why? I just can't. I just couldn't imagine him to be up for it. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Not his thing. Not his thing. No. Okay. So now Luke needs your help. He's just got his first job. Mm-hmm. Because we don't pay him. We're rubbish. No. Oh. So his first proper job. He's begged to get his first pay packet. And what Luke needs to know off you is what should he spend the money on? What did you spend the money on your first pay oh, packet? Can you remember? First pay packet. I remember I got my scholar age and I thought I was rich. <laughs> I remember the day actually and I was saying to him, Oh, look how much money I've got and things like that. I don't know, it depends what, what you what you like, I think. He told me how much he's earning, right? And I th- I thought he's rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends what you like. I, I you know, I would I'd say put a little bit of it away. Okay. Be smart. Sensible. Yeah, mm. be sensible. Um, I know it's your first pay packet. I think uh, that's a good piece of advice because I know that once you start spending, you start spending. Don't more, you? So yeah, yeah. If, if always, you, or you've always got to put a bit away, haven't you? Especially in this day and age now, it's you, it's inflation and things like that. You don't know what's going to happen, but yeah. night so out. Have to worry about inflation. <laughs> he's, he's got years to go for all that, but yeah, have a good night out. I'd say that's good advice. <laughs> and he's almost eighteen. He's two weeks away from oh, his eighteenth birthday. Is it, is it 18? so, oh so, yeah, yeah, definitely have a night out then, eh? Daniel Halpin is our final listener question for the day. Have you got any special quirky or weird routines that you do before a game or anything you've become aware of, habits that you do? I used to have a lot. I'll be honest, when I was youth team and things like that, I'd clean my boots at certain times, I'd have my tea at certain times, but I think as soon as that got disrupted, my head would fall off, so I kind of just binned it. Yeah. I just, I'd, I'd, I'd be honest, I have I have things I do in the changing room beforehand, like I'd take my hydration on, I'll put my right boot on probably 
every game. That's just without realising though. But um, I'll always go through a, the same warm up routine and things like that. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say I've got anything like I used to because as soon as one thing goes wrong, you think, "Oh my god, I'm gonna have a bad game," and then you start overcomplicating it and things like that. So yeah, I don't really. I'm not really superstitious anymore. That's a really cool answer. I've never thought of it that way. When you've kind of taken it the other way, that's that's really good, Luke. Can I just ask quickly, how do you keep that hair in such a <laughs> How? Um, I used know. to have hair like that, I can tell you, lots of gel. But everyone seems to think of blow dry, but you've got to let dry natural to get the uh, the wave into it, and then you just have your little uh, quirky products, and that I won't tell too much, cause, uh, unless I'm getting sponsorship deals off the, off the brands and yeah, that. Yeah. But a bit of product. Yeah, yeah, yeah a bit yeah, of product. A bit of product, a bit, bit of styling. Spray. I remember the days... Yeah, Phoenix uh, from the Flames on uh, Fantasy Football League is back. So they re- recreate like a goal from somebody's career. I'm going to change it a little bit. If you could recreate one moment from your career so far, what would it be? Oh. Maybe a certain goal at the uh, Rodney Parade? Yeah, I'd probably, I probably, to be <laughs> honest, I, I would probably say that. But I just wished, as I said earlier, I wished mm. there was fans in there just to go through that again because... The raw emotion of scoring your first goal, and at that time it was important, an important game for for both teams. I don't know if you remember, it put us top of the league really. So I'll probably say that one, yeah. And just that whole that whole experience of getting promoted and things like that the night after promotion. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can, can remember. I was actually covering the games during COVID. Yeah, I was lucky enough to be there, and it just wasn't the same, was it? No, not at it all. Was like, I think it was a bit like, like a training game, yeah, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and you had to create your own atmosphere, and mm. it's, it was something new in football again. So I think the day the fans come back in, I think it was pre-season, and even the noise in pre-season games was frightening, yeah. to be honest. Because yeah. yes, yeah, I guess it's really weird adjusting without fans, but then, but then it's re- getting re- back re- in, yeah. adjusting. Yeah, that's what because I'm because I'm quite young as well. I didn't. I haven't. I wouldn't say I've properly experienced. The, the whole fans and stuff like that so obviously this year was probably my first time and last year was probably my first so it, was a, it wasn't it was something new for me do you know what I mean but I, again that that feeling of when you know the fans are cheered and even sometimes Bill and I quite like that you know because of my hair and that I get stick anyway so you can imagine it's because you're Prince Charming you used to boo <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to do panto you have yeah, to get used to it yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah in your short, very short time at Newport County so far what's been the best thing about the club the people, the the people are spot on. To be honest, the, the the group of lads that we've got this year, like I don't think I've been in a in a changing room where that many people. There's no clicks, and that many people actually like socialising together. And I, 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 that's why I just I, I really do think we will come out of this sticky patch um, because the togetherness I've never seen nothing like it to be honest and I know it's easy to say that now but honestly I've, I, I'm have i enjoying my time here just because of how easy and good going the group is and this is important because this is the bit which we love talking to you guys about so the fans know that there is a different side to this of and, course, you know, yeah. and it's lovely to hear that there is that togetherness, course, togetherness yeah. there because again out there in the in the normal world now again going back to social media just things get pushed around and it's just not true is yeah, it just so really it's, exactly, it's just lovely yeah, getting yeah, some, yeah. some reality there you can relax for a minute you can take it easy because now it's our turn to, to gift you something. Now, we've got no money. <laughs> We're a bit rubbish like that, yeah? So what we've got for you, we thought that we would start with all the players coming in, researching the tune that was number one on the day that you were born. Oh, yeah. Do you know what it is? No, but I'm going to... Is it the I Am Blue? No, we won't be that, will it? No, go, go for it. What do you think it is? I, am, I don't know the uh, I Am Blue, is it? Oh, I Think 65. Da, oh, is yeah, it? no, no, it's not. Um, I used to love that song when I was a kid, so I just <laughs> thought maybe. Yeah, no, it's... No. it's it's a weird one because anything from 1990 to 2019 is songs that we will play on Newport mm. City Radio, but we don't sadly do pop. So yours is one of the songs that would just miss it a little bit. If it was Eiffel 65, blue, it's on. Yeah. It's there already. It is Robbie Williams and She's the One. So it's quite a little bit of a oh, ballad song. Yeah. So I would like to play it for you, but we haven't even got, got it. it. <laughs> oh, we did, Which, do you yeah. want to sing it then? Or? Uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to hear that? Like, <laughs> <"Well, laughs> <"Well, laughs> uh, if there's somebody guiding me home, she's the one. Oh, I, thought I, said, I thought you said you're brilliant. Oh, well, Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, thanks very much. There you yeah. go, there, there it is. Did, did that well, sound well, familiar? Didn't resonate, but... No, never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of the effort. Yeah, so... Yeah. Where's this record deal? Yeah. Get him <laughs> find that. <laughs> so so some, some major label. Yeah. Declan, thank you so much. No we really appreciate you coming and spending some time with us. And in this. Um, just amazing. I think we'll give Declan a little round of applause. We started yeah. doing that now. It's a new thing. We thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, be great to see you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Brilliant. Declan, everybody.
Thank you for taking time to listen today. As always, we'd love to read your thoughts about our thoughts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram via direct message. We're also on email, studio at newportcityradio.org. We will catch you with another special edition in the next couple of weeks with Priestley Falkinson. Falconson.